Hello guys, today in this video I would like to discuss about an important disease that is meningitis. Stay with me in next few minutes to understand how meningitis can affect human body. So let's start. With meningitis, mening refer to meninges which are three protective membranes that cover the brain and spinal cord and itis refer to inflammations. So, meningitis is an inflammation of the meninges. Most specifically, it is referred to the inflammation of the two inner layer which is called the leptomeninges. The outer layer of the meninges is the dura mater. The middle layer is arachidoid matter and the inner layer is the pia mater. This last two, the arachidoid and pia mater are the leptomeninges. Between the leptomeninges, there are the subarachinoid space, which is the house of CSF, that is cerebrospinal fluid. CSF is a clear, watery liquid, which is pumped around the spinal cord and brain. Now, at any given moment, there are about 150 milliliter of cerebrospinal fluid in the body. This is constantly replaced with around 500 milliliter of new cerebrospinal fluid produced every day and the excess or 500 minus 150 milliliter or 350 milliliter is absorbed in blood. Meningitis is the inflammation of the leptomeninges which are the inner two membrane around the brain and spinal cord. It is not the inflammation of the brain itself that is encephalitis when sometimes can occur together and when that happen it is called meningoencephalitis so meningitis needs some kind of trigger for the inflammations and could be a autoimmune disease where the body attack itself like lupus or the body having an adverse reaction to some medications like interthecal therapy but by far Infection is the most common trigger for meningitis across all age group like with the herp simplex virus for example. Now there are two routes that an infection take to reach the cerebrospinal fluid and leptomeninges. The first way is direct spread which is when a pathogen get inside the skull or spinal cord and then penetrate the meninges eventually ending up the cerebrospinal fluid. Sometimes the pathogen with have a come through overlying to the skin or up through the nose but it is more likely that there is an anatomical defect to blame. For example, it could be a congestional defect like spina bifida or an accurate one like the skull fracture. The second way is hematogenous spread which is when a pathogen enter the bloodstream and moves through the endothelial cell in the blood vessels making up the blood brain barrier and get into cerebrospinal fluid. To do this the pathogen typically have to bind the surface receptor on the endothelial cells in order to get across. Once the pathogen find the way into cerebrospinal fluid it can start to multiplying. Let's us create a scenario in this hematogenous spread to look the pathophysiology of this disease. So here is the lumen. So this is the nose or gut or lungs and here is the mucus. This is the epithelium and under the epithelium is the intestinal layer and then you have your capillaries basically your blood vessels which then circulate all around your body. The lumen is obviously access point of the bacteria. The bacteria have the ability to break down host antibodies using IgA protease which is breakdown mucosal antibody IgA. And this allow the bacteria to colonize the area. Some bacteria have virulent factor or mechanism which allow them to evade the immune system. The bacteria can enter into bloodstream and causes bacteremia and then can travel towards the brain and this is occur hematogenous spread. 
वांस द बैक्टीरिया एंटर इनटू ब्रेन इट कैन आल्सो क्रॉस द सेमी पार्मिएबल मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ द ब्रेन दैट इज ब्लड ब्रेन बैरियर आफ्टर देन बैक्टीरिया रीच टू सेरिब्रो स्पाइनल फ्लूइड वांस द बैक्टीरिया रीच टू सेरिब्रो स्पाइनल फ्लूइड द बैक्टीरिया गेट्स मल्टीप्लाइंग सून एनफ द हैंडफुल ऑफ वाइट ब्लड सेल सर्वाइलिंग द सेरिब्रो स्पाइनल फ्लूइड आइडेंटिफाई द पैथोजेन एंड रिलीज साइटोकाइंस लाइक इंटरल्यूकिन वन बीटा इंटरल्यूकिन सिक्स टू रिक्रूट एडिशनल इम्यूनो सेल्स व्वेन इट कम्स टू द कॉजेस ऑफ मेनिंजाइटिस भाइरस एंड बैक्टीरिया यूजली कॉज एक्ुएट मेनिंजाइटिस हायर फांगी कॉजेस क्रनिक मेनिंजाइटिस नाउ फर द बैक्टीरिया देर आर लट्स अफ पसिबिलिटीज इन न्यू बॉर्न द मोस्ट कमन कॉजेस अफ ग्रुप बी स्टेप्टोकक्की ई कोलाई लेस्टेरिया मोनोसाइटोजिन्स इन चिल्ड्रेन एंड टीन्स द मोस्ट कमन कॉजेस इज नेसरिया मेनिंजाइटिडिस एंड स्टेप्टोकस निमोनिया इन एडल्ट द मोस्ट कमन कॉजेस इज स्टेप्टोकस निमोनिया एंड लेस्टेरिया मोनोसाइटोजिन्स एज पर भाइरस द मेन कॉजेस इज एंटरो भाइरस स्पेसिफिकली कक्सिकिया भाइरस एंड हार्ब सिम्पिलेक्स भाइरस एच आई भी इज एन एनदार कॉजेस अफ भाइरल मेनिंजाइटिस देर आर सामटाइम्स अफ फांगी दैट कैन अल्सो कॉजेस मेनिंजाइटिस लाइक क्रिप्टोकस जिनासिस माइकोबैक्टेरियम ट्यूबारकुलेसिस कैन अल्सो कॉजेस ट्यूबारकुलार मेनिंजाइटिस नाउ द सीमटम्स अफ मेनिंजाइटिस इज हेड कैच फिवर निल रेडिजिटी और नेक सिकनेस सो कॉजेस फोटोफोबिया That is discomfort with bright light and phonophobia. That is this discomfort with loud sound. The diagnosis of meningitis starts with the physical exams. When a person lies flat on their back facing upward, and one their legs is raised with the knee flexed to the ninety degree angle, then the legs is supported and slowly strength at the knee. If This causes the back pain then it is called Kerenge signs another one is when the person lies flat on their back facing upward and has their neck supported and flexed if this cause them to anatomically flex their knee or hips then it is called Brodungi kind sign if meningitis is suspected a lumbar puncture can be done This is when a needle goes through the lower lumbar vertebral level of the spinal cord between L3 and L4 for example the needle penetrates into the subarachnoid space and a few milliliter of cerebro spinal fluid is taken the opening spacer can be measured and cerebro spinal fluid can be analyzed for white blood cell protein and glucose level polymerase chain reaction or pcr might be used to find specific causes like hiv enterovirus hsb the treatment of meningitis depends on the underlying causes for bacterial meningitis it is common is to administer steroid and then antibiotics to prevent massive injury to the leptomeninges from the inflammation the general drug treatment like antiviral antibacterial antifungal and antiparasitic drug are aimed to the specific causes of meningitis vaccine can also prevent meningitis like tuberculosis meningitis neisseria meningitis prophylactic antibiotic can also be administered to avoid outbreaks of bacterial meningitis please do not forget to subscribe our channel for further updates also like comment and share this video with your friends thank you